famous night for Hibernian Football Club at Easter Road against Aston Villa. It's all about to get underway. John Collins and Stephen McGinn, our co-commentators this evening. Our match commentator is Alistair Lamb. Thanks again, Jonathan. As you can hear in the background, this promises to be a wonderful occasion. But my goodness, it couldn't have gone much harder than this for Hibernian as they try to navigate their way into the group stage of the Europa Conference League. Lee Johnson's 500th game as a manager. And if he could come out of this with a positive result, it would surely be the most impressive of his career. Aston Villa back in Europe, European action for the first time in 13 years. This is a club very much on the up under a world-class manager in Unai Emery and strong, strong favourites to finish this tie before the second leg. Back in Birmingham in a week's time even begins. John McGinn, much talked about, shaking hands with his old pal Paul Hanlon in the centre of the pitch and the match referee. And we will soon be underway in this early evening in Leith. A lovely day it has been through here, very still. Not too warm, not too cold, perfect conditions, I dare say, for a football match and almost a full house right now. One or two supporters, no doubt, still to arrive. But it will be Hibernian in their traditional green and white tops, white shorts, green socks, going from left to right as we look at it from the back of the main stand. Wonderful vantage point for us to take in this huge game and it'll be... Aston Villa in claret and light blue, as we've so often seen them over the years, who will kick us off. And just savour that atmosphere in the background. As the Spanish referee just checks with his fellow officials, and we are good to go. Can Hibernian make a game of this? Can they stay in the tie? That's as much as you can surely ask of them as Villa get us underway and back they go to Diego Carlos the Brazilian centre back and Pau Torres a new addition uh, under Unai Emery he achieved uh, success at Villarreal and here he is at Villa he's overrun the ball on the halfway line he's challenged by Josh Campbell and it breaks to Jordan Obita who we can see early on Stephen is playing a, a midfield role it is a back four for Hibs 4-5-1, uh, pretty much it looks like, uh, with a beta playing on the left of that midfield. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a lopsided 4-4-2 to match up. I think they've got Obita on the left-hand side with Lewis Stevenson to deal with Leon Bailey, who was the star man on Sunday. Um, and maybe Mario cheating at times to try and catch him out on the left-hand side. It's Ollie Watkins picking up for Villa yet to score this season, but uh, been you know, a terrific marksman for them over the last couple of seasons he's moved from Brentford and it's back with Torres one of the summer acquisitions 30 odd million pounds they paid Villarreal for him as he flights out to the far side looking for Leon Bailey the fleet footed Jamaican but he's not fast enough to catch that and the early thoughts of John Collins well it's a 4-4-2 for me uh, Johan's at the top and Venti looks like he's just dropping in the hole maybe 4-4-1-1 so no is that a surprise to me I thought they might have went 4-3-3 to be honest but with two quick players in the wider area but I don't know if Johan can play back to goal I don't think that's his strength but they're looking for him to work early in the game that's good work from Campbell Boyle though losing out to Luca Dina John McGinn using his strength to burrow his way down the left hand side booed by the home crowd but Martin Boyle gets back to just tuck the ball out of play and uh, John himself was saying in the media pre-match that he expected to be the enemy as soon as that uh, first whistle went, as much as the Hibs fans remember him fondly, he's very much an opposition player tonight and he'll be giving it his all and expects to get the barracking of the home fans up as uh, Villa pick up from the back it's Diego Carlos who was signed uh, last summer but barely played, he had a, an Achilles injury early in his first season and is just back really to full fitness Hibs have got it back and uh, it's knocked back to the goalkeeper David Marshall, his first real feel of the ball. He goes long early on. Carlos is underneath it for Villa. And it's Joe Newell returning it. Carlos just flicks it off the top of his head back to Emi Martinez. 
perhaps Stephen at least that settled into the game they don't look by any stretch of the imagination overawed yeah ideal start they've, they've, they've had the chance to get their foot in a couple of times I think they're going to be able they're going to be able to play at times I think they'll be able to put their foot on it I think Villa are used to letting the other team take touches at the back so maybe instead of David Marshall kicking that early maybe taking a few extra touches but they'll be really pleased with the start home fans getting right behind their side this uh, European occasion uh, Battle of Britain, if you will, really catching the imagination as Villa come forward, looking for Bailey. It's handling though the edge of his own penalty area. It's high in the air, met by Campbell, who helps on towards the halfway line. Torres returns it, picked up by Diaby, looking to link with Watkins up front, but Miller's in there, knocks it back to his goalkeeper. Looks like he was being fouled in the process. The referee allows play to continue as Marshall gets it cleared up to the halfway line. Boyle beating the jump by Luca Dina, who by all accounts is on his way out of Villa but they haven't got a, a replacement in at the moment I think they have got uh, one of their left backs uh, Alex Moreno is injured and beyond that they don't have much in the way of backup so he hasn't been able to leave yet I think it's Nice likely to be his destination uh, not too far from where John Collins once displayed his talents on the south coast of France you know I think that's an area where Hibs can exploit I think Dean's a decent player I don't think he's the quickest I don't think he's the strongest but I think if Martin Boyle can get possession and get running him he can cause him problems back with Emi Martinez who is a huge figure in that Argentine World Cup win last December he's got the ball on the edge of his box and Easter Road really is rocking this afternoon as we played four and a half minutes still nil nil uh, neither keeper really been threatened in these early stages it's Pau Torres Spanish international knocks it down the left Dina plays it back to McGinn again into the edge of the box away by Hanlon and picked up by Bubakar Kamara out to the right hand side for Bailey looking to get the better of Lewis Stevens he loses his footing but regains it and then Knocks it back to the edge of the area, clipped in towards the back post. The header down from Dini and Marshall had to be lively at his near post. And it will be the first Aston Villa corner of the game. Here Marshall on his toes to keep out the effort from Dini from a tight angle. It's what Aston Villa can do, it's what they try and do. They've smothered Hibs in their own box and they're able to find the fullback coming out the back post. A real dodgy moment there for the Hibs defence, but good save from Marshall. Corner kick then from the left hand side for Villa. They look to try and make an early breakthrough and silence this home crowd. It's flicked on at the near post. What can Villa make of it? Not too much. Initially is the answer as Douglas Luiz is out muscled and Hibbs come forward on the counter. Yuan now played in on the left hand side. The pass forward to him just wasn't quite on the money and Villa able to regroup. That was a great opportunity of a counter attack. You know, Johan's got the pace of their back for the pass has got to be better. I think Miller could have got, away, got the pass away earlier yes. as well. I think the crowd was screaming for it. Luis out to Dina Johnson just at the edge of his technical area in front of uh, Dina as Torres switches it out to Esri Consa who shuffled across to right back tonight in the absence of Matty Cash Ollie Watkins played in behind Will Fish trying to get back with him she was a good turn of pace to hold him up out to the right hand side it goes for Bailey at angle of the box clips it in high in the air off the head of Miller and Boyle will try and bring it away for Hibbs it's fouled there, surely. And it will be... Hibs need to try and get some possession, get some simple passes at the back, back to the goalkeeper. Confidence comes with possession sometimes. They've been nice and compact, they've defended well, but there comes a period in the game you've got to make passes. It's an early warning for Will Fish. Ollie Watkins is going to continuously make that run. You can't turn your back on him, you can't switch off because he'll keep, keep doing it and it'll hurt you. Fish takes the free kick that did come about because of that foul by Douglas Luiz on Martin Boyle. Uh, for me, that's just a long, hopeful ball up the pitch, giving possession back to Aston. I'd like to see them pass it, be brave, trust each other. Seven in here at Easter Road, 0-0 between Hibernian and Aston Villa in this Europa Conference League playoff. Aston Villa already been spoken about as one of the favourites for this competition, they're not even in the group stage yet, but such is the faith that most people understandably have that they will find a way past Tavernian 
And here they come forward down the right hand side and it's Ponza forward from right back, checks back, infield he goes. It's back with Kamara just inside the Hibernian half, clips it forward. That's a decent run by Bailey in, in behind Lewis Stevenson, but there's too much on the pass. It's safely over a goal kick to Hibernian. Eight minutes gone, Hibernian nil, Aston Villa nil. David Marshall not in too great a hurry even at this early stage to take the set pieces I do think the crowd the way it is just now is electric Aston Villa are misplacing a few passes they're over hitting them under hitting them so if the crowd can stay engaged like that if the Hibs players can keep them involved it'll be a big, th big thing in this game Yuan wins the header goes back the way towards Stevenson who also gets his head to it Josh Campbell likewise then Hanlon and almost all the way through to Martin Boyle there, but uh, eventually out of play. And John McGinn just signals to his active ability team. Let's just settle it down a bit because uh, it doesn't do them probably any favour. It's as frenetic as it started, Stephen. Yeah, and, and Aston Villa do this from throw ins. They try and they bring everyone over and they, they want you to just throw up the line and give a weak back possession. If they can be brave, if Josh Campbell can get on the ball, Joe Newell, a simple pass back, switch the play, they can catch them out with how over the Aston Villa team are. Seventh in the English Premier League last season under Unai Emery, who came in at the start of November when they were down in 16th and really struggling uh, after Steven Gerrard's tenure ended poorly for the club. But uh, what a turnaround it's been! And uh, well, I've been reading about certainly John McGinn himself, but also many of his teammates talking about how meticulous Unai Emery is in terms of his preparation, the one to one sessions, the group sessions going over every fine detail and my goodness it seems to pay dividends I think it's not just John, guys like Ollie Watkins Douglas Louise, Konza they've all gone to another level under Unai Emery it's not a secret he, he's one of the best in the world they've, they've done really well to get him here's Dean, your left hand side of the penalty area for Villas, they come forward back with Louise in field, it goes to Kamara, tries to find Louise again just come to stretch and losing possession ultimately Yuan felt he was fouled there and the referee agrees and awards him the free kick just on the edge of the centre circle and all these little stoppages will be just fine for Hibernian, you say. Ten minutes in, John, nil-nil, yeah, and Hibs uh, looking well, pretty decent. Aston Villa are having lots of possession, but to be honest, they're, they're not cutting through Hibs. Hibs are looking fairly comfortable out of possession. Here's a switch of play that Stephen was talking about. Will fish out to the left-hand side for a beat-up, but he is caught offside, unfortunately. For Hibernian, and that will be a free kick to Aston Villa midway inside their own half on the right hand side. Jordan Abita shouldn't be offside, but you can see even Joe Neal's reaction, he's clapping Lewis Miller. That is the that is the way they can get out against this Aston Villa team. Yeah, and credit to Hibernian uh, management for having uh, clearly identified that as a tactic, as well as our own Stephen McGinn, as uh, Amy Martinez picks up possession just outside. <coughs> it's penalty area. I think I just swallowed a wee leaf fly there. That wasn't, that's not going to do me any good for the commentary. As uh, Villa come forward up to the halfway line, it's Carlos. Trying one over the top. It's a rather aimless one, though. Easy for Lewis Miller to take down on the chest. Then checks back the Australian. Back to his goalkeeper, David Marshall, who had that awful error out in Andorra. But uh, having recovered from the injury that kept him out of the return leg, against Inter Escaldes, he's back in favour as the number one. It's uh, Eli Yuan's the latest type of player to be caught offside the Aston Villa have taken the free kick quickly, 11 and a half minutes gone. Again, Eli Yuan's got to be better, he's got to be clever, he's got to be looking over his shoulder, looking where centre-halves, he can't be caught offside, it's so frustrating, the team. Carlos out to Kwanza, Matty Cash on the, the bench, the Polish international this evening. It's the only change from that highly impressive 4-0 victory over Everton to get Villa on the board after the heavy opening day defeat at Newcastle. 5-1 they lost. Here's Dinia forward it goes to Watkins, gets it back left-hand side. Cross comes off Watkins, which does Hibs a favour. He allows them to get out of their own danger area. Neat little flick on by Yuan. Helped on by Vent out to the left-hand side for a beater. Beater with the early ball in. Back post ball. Boyle back into oh, the six yard box and it's an offside flag up in any event as uh, Martinez collects. That is a good boy move from Hiberni and that will give them confidence. Excellent play, switching it one right to left and then a terrific ball from Bita to the back post, just offside, but good play from Hibs. Got to give them confidence. Yeah, that 
that's exactly what we want to see. Hibs on the front foot and uh, passing the ball with confidence and good link-up, good lay-offs with uh, Yuan and Venter combining well. And Villa already know they're not going to get this all their own way and they've popped up possession in the middle of the park. It's Douglas Louise giving it away rather easily. And, uh, Yuan gets it to Stevenson, left-hand side. I think Obita had gone offside again, so he checked out of his run. Stevenson didn't recognise that. Over the top he went, and it's out for a goal kick to Aston Villa. 0-0 after 13 minutes here. It's something they work on, the offside trap. They work on it all the time. And I think if you watch the Aston Villa-Newcastle game, when it goes wrong with, with late runners, that, that's how you exploit it. But early on, the Hibs boys are going to have to come up when the Aston Villa defence steps up. And when they do push up, the straight pass over the top is in a slippy surface, it just goes out. It's got to be diagonal passes in behind at an angle. Villa have it through Pau Torres. They made the point they need to respect every team they come up against in Europe, regardless of their favourite status. Here he is again. 23 caps for Spain onto the Frenchman Digne. That's a poor ball in from Digne, though. Hand goes up and acknowledgement of oh, that straight to the arms of David Marshall and almost quarter of an hour gone at Easter Road and no goals as Fish hits the ball and then plays it looking over the top for Venter looking to cause Torres a problem here the left centre back looks in control but Venter's not giving up on it goes into the penalty area and uh, Diego Carlos content to just knock it out of play on the steer side perfect example of what I was talking about before the game you put them under pressure and they're no great players that just shows you a little bit of pressure and the centre half's kicking it out of the pitch more of that from Hibs at the top of the pitch, I'd like to see. Yeah, they worked well as a partnership there, Venti yeah. and Yuan. Shows you the difference it can make to a team when the front boys press like that. Boyles flick inside. Venti couldn't just bring it under control. And it's back to Martinez from Dinho. One touch and then knocks it away before Yuan can get there. Over the halfway line it goes and Watkins holds it up for Bailey. Bailey tries to force it back out to the right-hand side for Watkins, the England international. Comes in field, Bubakar Kamara just dips the shoulder and moves away from Newell. And now it's Douglas Luiz. Forward for Watkins and back once more for Kamara. Out to the right hand side now for Bailey. Former Bayer Leverkusen man played against Rangers, as did Musa Diaby a few years back. Into the penalty area it comes, but knocked away by Campbell. Up towards Yuan. Yuan needs to hold it up and bring teammates into play. He's going back into the danger area and he's given it away in a poor area and it's into the box it comes it's back with Diaby deflection right into the arms of David Marshall and Eli Yuan breathe a sigh of relief almost putting his side in real trouble there David Marshall makes the save I mean, Johan's given no help by Abita Johan's coming towards him Abita runs instead he drops off he does the exact opposite what he should do and leaves him in a really difficult situation Hibs got lucky there and Ewan's almost, he knows he's taking it too far and, he, and he's getting pressed, he's almost actually better just putting out for a throw-in and getting everyone back in, it was a really dangerous situation there for Hibs Offside flag up again against uh, Hibs attacker and Villa will have another free kick but uh, yeah, that was certainly the most dangerous Villa I've looked and it was uh, Hibs doing effectively as uh, Eli Ewan went up a, a blind alley but as John points out, he didn't have a great deal of support from his teammates who rather hid rather than supported him as uh, Villa come forward once more. It's slipped by Diaby to Dinho, left-hand side, flashes it across the goal mouth. Back it comes for Kamara, little flick for Douglas Louise. Steps away from Stevenson, gets the shot in, blocked by Newell. About 12 yards from goal, away by Abita, but this is the most pressure Villa have had in the opening exchanges. Here they come once more, into the feet of Moussa Diaby. Uh, 50 million plus signing from Leverkusen. There's a glancing header and it's in! Villa have the lead, Ollie Watkins getting on the end of Luca Dina's pinpoint ball from the left hand side. He rose and just guided it beyond David Marshall into the bottom left hand corner of the keeper. And after 70 minutes, it's Hibernian nil, Aston Villa won. Tremendous delivery into the box from Dane. He's whipped it in, beautiful height, good tempo. It's a glancing header right into the corner. Keeper's got no chance. Bottom corner, in off the post. He's had two or three situations, Digne, where he's, not, he's hit the first man. But if you keep giving players of that quality a chance to just pick their spot, it was a brilliant ball in, an amazing header from Molly Watkins. David Marshall, no chance. Just leading up to the goal, you just felt Aston Villa were beginning to get their pass in, crisp a little one-twos, bouncing it off each other. Yeah, they just looked to be turning the screw a little bit, didn't they, John? And um, the ball was quality from Dinho, absolutely 
right on the forehead of Ollie Watkins, who gets off the mark for the season in his third game. 16 goals last time out, and that's him off the mark as Aston Villa strike first. Hibs had kept them out for just over a quarter of an hour, but Villa have the goal they were looking for. And uh, Hibs must ensure they try and keep it tight for the rest of the half. They don't want to be losing more goals before the interval. They need to stay in this tie as uh, Lewis Miller just sees it out under a bit of pressure from John McGinn. 18 in, though, Easter Road. And uh, Hibs crowd just quietened that little bit with that uh, Ollie Watkins header. Here's Eli Ewan, though, at the other end. Midway inside the Villa half out to the right-hand side. Ventus low ball in. Boyle gets turned in the box, tries to get the shot away. It's blocked. All side flag up again against Boyle, but it's going to be allowed to continue because Villa are on the counter. And it's Diaby who, as Stephen has pointed out, is absolutely electric. But uh, Villa just take the sting out of the attack as McGinn goes back to Dinia. And now infield inside their own half, it's Torres. And they just uh, bring it down to a walking pace. And, uh, I think it's as you were talking about earlier on, Stephen, this notion of... Uh, Emery wants them to they want to suck players out almost before they make the killer passes. Yes, and there Jordan Abita is the one that falls for it. He, he steps out and they find Ollie Watkins and all of a sudden they're in the final third. And it's Dina left hand side, comes to McGinn inside the box, clips it towards the back post. Another chance, big chance over the top. That really should have been uh, the number two. Magnificent play from John McGinn. Takes a touch in the box, lifts his head, delivers it right onto his head. That should be 2-0. Hibbs got off with it there. Leon Bailey arriving at the back post and couldn't keep his header down. It's something Hibs have spoken about and they've been done great in the first 15 minutes not to fall for it, not to bounce out. All it takes is that goal, changes the mindset a little bit. Jordan Abita thinks he has to go and all of a sudden Villa becomes so dangerous and, and that Hibs are wide open. Yeah, that could so easily have turned into 2-0 after 20 minutes and that really would have been a, a devastating blow for Hibernian just have to regroup just at the moment and uh, regain the composure that they began the, the game with but Villa have certainly turned it up a notch just in the last five minutes or so beginning to show their class and uh, you would certainly expect them to be challenging up and around uh, the European places again in what is an ultra competitive English Premier League it's so difficult to choose who will be the, the top teams with uh, the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool last time out finding it really difficult and uh, some of these newcomers almost Brighton and Villa challenging up the top echelons as Boyle's fouled by Dinia and it's going to be the first yellow card of the game for the French fullback. great for Hibs that now message has got to be feed Boyle he's booked every single time you get him Centre forward, fullbacks stay away, isolate him, 1v1, one, one, one loss of concentration, one missed time tackle, and he can go off the pitch. So it's a free kick to Hibernian, just a couple of yards in off the right touch line, about 35 yards maybe from the goal line. Joe Newell and Mark Boyle over this. You fancy it'll be the left foot of Newell to curl it in towards goal. Indeed, Boyle runs away from it. There's the in swinger, but it's a poor ball from Newell. Doesn't beat the first defender who was Dean. He's won it back, right-hand side, slides it forward for Boyle, who looks offside again. Play allowed to continue for the moment, at least, as Boyle clips it in, flicked on by Ewan at the near post. And now the flag goes up. It is the delayed flag that we are growing used to over the years. Uh, we know that, especially with uh, video assistant referees in operation, the assistants are encouraged to keep their flags down and just let play continue, but it eventually goes up and it will be a free kick to Villa, deep in their own territory. 22 minutes on the clock, Hibernian nil, Aston Villa 1. I think, I think Martin Boyle, I think he'll, if he keeps doing it, at some point he's going to catch it. The Hibs players need to, as John says, need to isolate Digna against Boyle now, they have to keep looking for it. And yes, they're going to be offside at times, because Villa is something they're very good at, they work on it all the time, but at one point they will get in if they keep doing it. Diego Carlos inside his... Own penalty area, plays it square for Konza. Kamara takes possession in a tough area, but composed enough to keep the ball and just eventually find a teammate under real pressure from Venta. And uh, Villa come out the other side as 
I mean, Martinez finds Torres and then McGinn looking for Dina and then McGinn's overhead passes greeted by cheers from the home crowd who used to adore John McGinn's he is part of Hibernian folklore of course with that 2016 Scottish Cup win New picks up for Hibernian switches play out to the left hand side for Stevenson just crossing the halfway line forward he comes up against Bailey out to the further to the left and plays a 1-2 it's a neat 1-2 with a beater early ball in Yuan just couldn't read the pass and uh, it was Carlos who almost misread it but uh, Villa recover and managed to clear the lines and here they come on the counter down the right hand side now is Bailey infield for Kamara Kamara out to the left for Dina another crossing position here potentially instead he just tries to slide it down the left channel for McGinn but uh, wasn't a good pass from Dina on that occasion and all the way through to, to David true. Marshall Hibs have true when you get up into that final third they can cause problems to this this back four I don't think they're that comfortable when players are running them yeah, that was a chance just a moment ago but uh, Eli Yuan rather on his heels I don't think he really anticipated the ball coming to him as uh, Villa pick up midway inside their own half through Dina back it goes to to Torres and now Diego Carlos into Camara midway inside his own half as the Hibs fans try and get back behind their team and uh, encourage them to find a, an equaliser Only Watkins glancing ahead of the difference between the sides thus far as Will Fish cuts out a through ball and then tries to play it back forward early on for Yuan but Carlos was there heads it down to Camara just inside his own half Douglas Luiz now forward for Watkins, layoff for Diaby Diaby running at the Hibs back line out to the left hand side, Dina again in an advanced position, Diaby hangs out to the edge of the box, Joe Newell with a sliding challenge, had to get that inch perfect, I think he got it bang on as Diaby stays in the ground after the challenge came in, the referee was in a good position to see it certainly and allowed it to go, and Hibs break up the other end, Boyle's done really well wins it back off Torres for Yuan, Yuan at the edge of the box now it's Venta, Obita's out of the left-hand side of the penalty area. Can he find a cross for a teammate? He's blocked away for a hips corner. And listen to that roar. And that's got the fans going, but that all started with a terrific tackle here with Joe Rio in his own box. Ball up the line, again putting him in the back foot. Much better from Hibs. Corner kick then from the left-hand side, which will be taken by Joe Newell, who came on and got the goal back and Andorra made such a difference coming on at half time to bring them back into the tie which uh, still ended that leg in an embarrassing defeat but they turned it round and it will be Newell who's been excellent at the start of the season in general to take from the left hand side left footed is uh, Hibbs former queue at the edge of the box trying to make something of this set piece to get back in level terms curled out of the way by Newell it's made by the head of Carlos comes to Boyle at the edge of the box can he get room for the shot there really? he goes that's really? going to be a penalty oh the referee waves his arms and says no chance bah. that looked like Boyle was taken out of play by Douglas Louise and the VAR will have a look at it but the referee said not in his view goal kick I think this could be given I think so Martin I. Boyle's inviting the challenge coming but I think there's connection there not given right away not given well well the uh, video assistant referee Jose Luis Montero of Spain agrees with his colleague on the field that uh, there wasn't enough in that and Boyle hitting the deck goes unpenalised for me it looked like there was a, a bit of contact certainly between him and the Brazilian midfielder but uh, not given and so it remains Hibernian nil Aston Villa won after 27 minutes but that's got the crowd on their feet again that's Will Fish giving the ball away there he's got to be doing better he's 20 yards 25 yards away from his target he can be 2-3 yards off but not that far better quality required I think he's rushing it I don't think he needs to rush it I think he can get yeah. a few touches yeah. in with, with this little centre half Paul Hanlon Emi Martinez with the ball at his feet at the edge of his penalty area, waiting again for Hibbs to commit a man before playing the pass. Back it goes to the Argentine keeper. 
again. He just waits for Eli Yuan to come within a couple of yards and then plays the long ball, looking for Dinho, but it's out of play, overhit. And it'll be a Hibernian throw in. It's interesting, that's the manager shouting at his goalkeeper for that long pass. It's very evident he doesn't want his goalkeeper playing long passes. Throw in taken by Miller, looking for Venta, but Torres is there first, knocks it back to Martinez. He's very methodical, you know, I mean, he wants it to build, he wants them to play this way and suck the Hibs players out and not to rush it, not to force it. Cons up, back to Martinez, almost forced to go long that time, that's well won by Hanlon, but uh, Torres just lets that drift behind. Much, the goal kick. much better pressing from Hibs there, when the goalkeeper's got it, the whole team's pushed up the back four, you've more chance of winning it and stressing them. When they drop off too much, it's easy for the West Ham goalkeeper in the back four. I think they've got to be braver with the press. They can go another 10, 15 yards up the pitch, Hibs. Martinez again has it at his feet. He's just been linked with Bayern Munich. I saw during the week that uh, Villa will be keen to keep a hold of him. Such an important part of what they're building here as they try and build from the back once more. Up towards Watkins it goes. Knocks it back to Bailey, he can't keep it. Obita finds Newell, he lifts it over. The Villa defends once more, looking for the continued run of Obita, but Kamara went back there and uh, managed to find Konza, who's then fouled by Obita. It'll be a Villa free kick, which is quickly taken up to him again, midway inside his own half. He gets turned, centre of the park. And then back with Kamara, just inside his own half. Still 1 0 to the Midlands side with uh, Ollie Watkins on 17 minutes, the glancing header, the difference between the teams so far, out with Dina who created that with a wicked ball in from the left-hand side, back with Torres now on the halfway line, infield for Kamara, Douglas Luiz plays a quick ball round the corner for Watkins, back with Kamara out to the right-hand side now to Leon Bailey, Bailey up against Stevenson, checks into the left, oh, just over the crossbar! And it's out for a corner, it must have taken a clip, I'm not sure if it was off Marshall or the defender, but... Uh, really got a hold of the shot, certainly Leon Bailey had Lewis Stevenson beaten but uh, over the top it goes and it will be a Villa corner It's topped off from Douglas Louise, he's, he's hardly touched it in the game so far and like that he plays the ball around the corner just totally opens up Hibs, Leon Bailey has a one-on-one -on -one against Lewis Stevenson, inside the box all, time, all kinds of trouble, good save Marshall John McGinn over on the right hand side to take the corner left footed as Villa look for a second on the half hour mark Swings it in, headers won by Diego Carlos, and he really should be hitting the target from there, but instead it goes a yard or two beyond David Marshall's right-hand post. Tries to take the goal kick quickly to release Eli Yuan, but it was moving, reckons the referee, and he wants him to take it again. And that will uh, restart with the Hibernian goal kick. Just over a half-hour mark, uh, Aston Villa just missing out on a chance to go 2-0 up as Bailey had the shot deflected over, and then from the corner... Diego Carlos heading wide when he should at least have been testing David Marshall, but it remains Hibs nil, Aston Villa one. Marshall then goes long once more. Miller beating the jump by Dina. Down the Villa left it goes out of play. Will Fish will just leave that for Miller to take the throw in. About 15 yards inside his own half, the Australian fullback. Bit of a regular this season so far, having played only sporadically last season, partly through injury, as Newell almost gives it away, but it's out for another throw in two hips, this time in the halfway line, taken long by Miller. He was looking to try and get it over Dina for the speedy boil, but Dina did well to get his head to it, and then manages to clear his lines up to Watkins, who holds off the challenge of Miller and then dashes towards goal Miller's trying to stay with him, slips it to his left for Diaby, Diaby edge of the penalty through the legs there, oh, down goes Bailey this time everybody has a look at it and shakes his head once more and it's uh, an offside flag is going to prevent any further danger for Aston Villa in any case as the ball was played through the challenge came in uh, on Leon Bailey but uh, the offside flag is up you know, Alistair, one thing that really annoys me in football when teams constantly give throw-ins away to the opposition. They don't even have to work to get it back. Miller there, he can throw it back to the centre-half, and go back to the goalkeeper and a switch of play, throws it up the line, lose possession. Five seconds later, the opposition's nearly scoring a goal. You've got to think, possession, 
don't give the ball away easily. Well, I thought it, uh, the assistant was flagging for an offside, but evidently he was signalling it's a corner over in this near side, the far away side from his perspective. So it's a Villa corner, left hand side, swung in, right footed towards the back post, and it's stuck in again, and it's Ollie Watkins who somehow managed to divert it beyond David Marshall from the tightest of angles. Thought it was almost impossible for him to do so, but he's managed to get it beyond the keeper and into the back of the net. And 33 minutes in, it's a Bernie in there, Aston Villa 2. They worked really hard on their set pieces with Austin McPhee. They've worked a block on Hibs. Diego Carlos is free, and he's just a glancing header, and Ollie Watkins is there at the back post to tap it in. Aston Villa will be delighted in terms of they're not at their free flowing best but the 2-0 lead in a difficult tie, it's, they, they'll be delighted with the start. Really, really difficult now for Hibs, they've got to try and open up, you know, this is a dangerous period. Not ideal, but let's see what they're made of, they've got to stay focused, stay together, got to try and keep the ball, let's say, giving the ball away too easily, for my liking. But, but John's right, Villa have a throw-in, they've earned the right to throw in, a bit touch of the ball. Lewis Miller's got to take more responsibility. He's the one in charge of the ball. Nobody's forcing him to take a quick one. Get it into Joe Neal, get, to, get your football players on the ball and switch the play, because Aston Villa just want you to throw up the park so they get the ball again. He's, he's thrown it. Uh, Martin Boyle's facing him, he's got a defender up his backside. What's he supposed to do? What? He's throwing it in the air to him. It's a pointless, pointless exercise. Why would you not throw it back, simple back to your centre-half, back to your goalkeeper out the other side? These are small details. Against Scottish Premier League teams, you get the ball straight back off the opposition, maybe 9 out of 10. Against this quality opposition, they punish you. If you keep giving the ball away, these quality players, they come and punish you. There's a delay in the restart because Ezri Konza took a head knock in the process of that goal going in as the corner was swung out, it was glanced on. At the near post, I think it was uh, Diego Carlos, did you say, Stephen, who got, who got the, the near post header, and there was Ollie Watkins at the back post, somehow managed to squeeze it beyond David Marshall, uh, and Aston Villa have a two-goal advantage. Well, we knew it was going to be tough. It's something in the VAR era. It's not something that's worked on a lot, the block, the, the free people up in the box, but Villa have did it. The, the corner previous that John takes, they've freed up Diego Carlos for a free header at the back post. They've did it again. This time he gets a glancing header on it. Well, Ollie Watkins just waiting to let any good striker to tap it in. We are back underway. Hibs trail by two. And what began as an uphill task has become a mountainous one already. Ten minutes till the interval which could really do with a goal back as Stevenson tries to find Yuan. Poor pass though, and then he loses out in the challenge, and Villa looking to kill the tie off, perhaps even before half-time in the first leg. Hibs fans trying to stay with their side, but it's difficult when you've lost two first-half goals and you're up against really top-class opposition. Here's Kamara out to Konza, who's recovered from that head knock. Back him to Kamara. Now Carlos, halfway line for Villa. Again, just slowing the game down before really kicking back into gear when the, the time is right. Kamara and Konza linking on the right-hand side. Konza just forced back the way for now. Kamara out to the right for Bailey, tries to... Flick that beyond Stevenson as he caught there by the Hibs veteran. Come to the referee, he was, and it'll be a free kick against Stevenson, making uh, his 584th appearance for Hibs tonight. And this will be one of the toughest games I imagine he's played in. Bailey stayed down after that challenge by Stevenson on the halfway line. He definitely caught him, it was not intentional, but typical Lewis Stevenson, he goes in 100%, he misses the ball. He gets a man. What you're going to see now from Aston Villa is a team that's just going to pop it about. And they're just going to keep possession, tire Hibs out, pull them out of little pockets and then go into those pockets. It's discipline now. Players have got to don't just run about all over the place. They've got to run about together as a unit, not as individuals. Villa have it moving once more. Torres plays it forward to Dina. Dina though loses it to Miller. Miller's ball forward, he didn't know much about it it went to Eli Yuan who was standing in an offside position and uh, the flag goes up 
and Villa will have the, the free kick. And then, uh, I mean, Martinez hasn't been worked particularly hard in this first period. It's a difficult one for Lee Johnson now. What do you do? Bring a few extra players on, play with, play with 12 players. <laughs> yeah, Half-time team talk, in which he will uh, have to earn his corn, as Villa have it at the edge of their own penalty area. Played forward for Diaby. Diaby fouled by Hanlon. Gets back up, stepped away, and then Yuan challenged by Diego Carlos. Hibs fans fouling for a, fouling for a free kick, but um, nothing given. Villa continue. And it's Douglas Luiz forward for Watkins, who just nudges it on for Diaby, but he won't get there, and it's back with David Marshall. Diaby looks really sharp. He, got, he hit the deck there, and he just bounced back up with a bit of rubber. Carlos winning the header before Yuan can latch on to the through ball. Campbell hasn't been able to get into the game at all, and then given away by Fish to Watkins, who's on a hat-trick. He's down as he just runs into Fish, no free kick given. And the striker stays down, play allowed to continue. He was very much in that, to be honest, and uh, six minutes to the interval, he's trailing by two goals to nil. Stevenson for a beat-up down the left-hand side. Konza putting pressure on him, out of play it goes, Hibs throwing, midway inside their own half over in the, the Hibs left. It's their uh, fifth meeting with the uh, English opposition in Europe, they've only won one of the eight ties in that time. Uh, they did manage to beat Liverpool in a UEFA Cup first round home tie, 1-0, but went out 3-2 in aggregate, otherwise... Uh, generally speaking been tough for them against English opposition and it certainly has been this evening so far as Villa come forward once more as Watkins on the edge of the box can't keep it but it comes back to Diaby 25 yards from goal Bailey now right hand side Konza goes in the overlap checks out of it back it comes to Kamara square now for Douglas Louise who tucked home a penalty against Everton now Torres, everyone for Aston Villa inside the Hibernian half except for the keeper, it's Diaby, about 35 yards from goal, Villa looking for a third before the interval, five minutes until half-time, Luis, central area, midway inside the Hibs half, Hibs trying to stay compact and not allow Villa an easy way through, good challenge by Campbell, Villa just go back the way, Torres to Martinez at the edge of his area, who plays the ball out to Carlos, right-hand side, 15 yards inside his own half. Back comes Kamara there, and then he goes back to his goalkeeper. And Villa just playing keep ball at the moment. Really difficult for Ibs to try and get anything on it. And that can become pretty tiring physically, mentally, as the game progresses. That's given away, though, by Torres, likewise by... Hanlon, picked up by Kamara, right-hand side now is Bailey, but 25 yards from goal, plays it square for McGinn, McGinn now out to the left-hand side, Dina almost at the goal line, can he find the cross? It's a good cross, there's a third goal, it's Leon Bailey this time, Dina the provider once more, and it's all too easy for Aston Villa, as Dina just stands it up to the back post, and there was Leon Bailey, the Jamaican, who scored against Everton on Sunday, and he scored at Easter Road to make the score before half-time, Bernie and nil, Aston Villa three. I mean, it's a superb goal from Aston Villa's point. Hibs players getting tired, you can actually see them physically, really. Levels have dropped the last five minutes, and you think they're going to cut them open. Exactly what they did. John McGinn, it's a wonderful pass. It's not to the player's feet, it's a pass right to the byline. Taylor made for a left-footed like Dean just arrives right in the line and just dinks it, the perfectly weighted cross to the back post, once again they're winning the headers, which they're difficult to defend for centre half because they're getting they're coming from dangerous areas next to the byline, but Hibs now it's going to be a long, long night They've had warning after warning, they've let Lewis, Lucas Digny throw cross in after cross in he's not got a lot of them right, but if you keep letting him cross it, Lewis Miller's not done nearly enough to, to stop the balls coming in if you keep letting a player of that quality with the left foot he has deliver, he's going to deliver a couple on the money and that's what's happened for the first and the third goals It's a tough school this for Hibernian, Aston Villa the big boys from the English Premier League have come and they 
haven't taken this lightly. They are throwing everything at Hibernian. And they've come away in this first half with three goals. So far, that is still a couple of minutes of the first half left. They haven't had to work overly hard for them, you'd have to say. And it's... As John said, it's going to be a long, long night. Not to mention the second leg to come in a week's time at Villa Park. Villa back in possession once more. Unai Emery out at the edge of his technical area, looking for even more from his side. As Douglas Louise picks up away from the challenge of Campbell, gets it back from McGinn. Aston Villa really enjoying themselves out there now. Out to the left-hand side it goes for Diaby. Diaby almost at the corner flag. Back it goes to Digne. And uh, Diaby once more for Pau Torres. Diego Carlos inside the centre circle. Villa fans singing Can We Play You every week, rather unkindly to their hosts. But, uh, the golfing class all too apparent, unfortunately, in this opening 45 minutes as Dina picks up once more on the left-hand side. He had things all his own way down that flank. Diego Carlos picks up on the halfway line. That's area of the park is really hurting Hibs. Joe Newell and Josh Campbell, they're working so yes. hard to get tight with Kamara and Douglas Louise. But if their defenders don't come up with John McGinn or, or Diaby or Bailey, the space for them to turn and then just feed, feeding the wide man. And it's just it's so hard to stop. It's such hard work, but they've all got to try and do it together. Here's Cons up midway inside the Hibs half, inside the final minute of the 45. Hopefully, from Hibs' point of view, not too much. And then we have injury time to play as the ball's given away by Diaby. Just a little bit of lackadaisical there giving it to Yuan, who can't make any headway, he does play the ball off Bailey, wins the side, a throw-in on the halfway line, but uh, Hibs have had precious little to cheer them in this opening 45 minutes, trail by three goals to nil, two from Ollie Watkins, one from Leon Bailey. As uh, Hibs come forward, uh, four minutes here, uh, is going to be added on, and we're just about moving into that at the end of this first period. Here's uh, Joe Newell, Newell down the left-hand side, if Hibs could get just a goal back before the interval then it just would give them some something to cling on to going into halfway uh, half time something to be positive about but it, uh, Albert, uh, Aston Villa just playing their way out of a dangerous area rather comfortably there as Dina puts it back to Torres edge of his own area John McGinn comes deep to collect possession moves all the way back inside his own area goes across his six yard box and still Hibs can't get near them it's Diego Carlos, forward it goes up to Watkins, just lays it off for Bailey, the scorer of the third goal, then he tries to return it for Watkins, over the top, he could be in for a hat-trick here, Ollie Watkins, right-hand side of the penalty area, just wide of the right-hand post of David Marshall, only inches beyond that far post, Ollie Watkins, almost a third goal for him in this first period, almost a fourth for Villa, but it will remain in injury time, it be only nil, Villa three. Tremendous play from Villa, uh, starting on their own byline with John again, playing a square pass in front of his goalkeeper. Most Scottish coaches would say, what you do, you can't pass it, but footballers can pass it under pressure anywhere on the football pitch. And they're now they're just stretching hips all over, creating space for themselves. Villa have it, left-hand side, Dina just forces it down the flank. Cross comes Fish, tries to look over the top for... Boyle, but uh, again, Dina was there. Well, he might be about to leave the club. He's uh, been hugely influential in this first half. Look at Dina. John, you'd pinpointed him as perhaps a defensively a weak point, but it's, it's been all offensive from him, and he's well, done his job well, really well. The bottom line: when your team dominate possession, you're no longer a fullback; you're a winger in modern-day football. And he's done all his good stuff in the, in the left wing area, and he's got. There's no doubt he's got a terrific left foot. He wraps his foot around it. Here's Watkins, Fish with the challenge, but it was a pull back a moment earlier, and the referee gives Aston Villa the free kick just inside the Hibs half. It's uh, Kamara, a very comfortable first 45 for the English side. Kamara once more midway inside the Hibs half, looks out to the right hand side looking for Corns Albita's there first. Albita was part of a a Reading side, he was talking about during the week, that beat Aston Villa in the Championship a few years back. 
they're not uh, coming close to reproducing that he has him side now uh, Villa at a different level from that team that uh, came back up four years ago and they've just improved pretty much year on year and certainly last season uh, their highest finish since they were last in Europe back in 2010 when they finished sixth and they could get even better in the season to come here they are in possession once more it's given away though by Diaby the home fans want him to come forward when they get the opportunity and Campbell went back the way I think they'll invent his own but I think when you've seen that little of the ball he's worked so hard Josh Campbell he's just wanting a touch of the ball he's just wanting to find a Hibs player and that's what, that's what these teams can do to you Back with David Marshall inside his own six-yard box. Plays it out to Hanlon and Stevenson. Obita now down the, the left flank. And forward by Neil. One for you, to Chase. Diego Carlos keeping his eye on it. Heads it down for Konza. Konza loses it, though, to you. And little step over, trying to get away from Kamara. Kamara sticking with him, perhaps illegally. I think that's what the fans... A calling for they wanted a free kick it's not forthcoming and Villa are on the break and looking for a fourth deep into stoppage time we've played the four minutes play continues out to the left hand side it comes it's Dina once more looking for the 1-2 he gets it inside the box matched by Martin Boyle held up and there goes the half time whistle to end Hibbs first half misery the boos ring out round the stadium I think that's really a criticism of Hibbs as such but they have been clearly second best as many people feared three goals Villa have managed in that first period the first one set up just after the quarter hour mark by Luca Dina cross from the left hand side was pinpoint for Ollie Watkins to glance the header from about 12 yards past uh, rooted to the spot David Marshall uh, Villa really had just prior to that begun to exert their authority and from that moment onwards it was an iron grip they had on proceedings uh, Bailey had a header over just a few minutes later. Uh, the only real chink of light for Hibbs in that first period was a Martin Boyle penalty claim just before the half hour mark. I must say, I thought there was contact made by Douglas Louise inside the Villa box, but the referee didn't think so, and neither did VAR, and so play continued. And then Villa added a second. That came when uh, Ollie Watkins, just after the half hour mark, got his head to the ball from a Douglas Luiz corner glanced on at the near post by Diego Carlos and finished at the back post from a tight angle by Watkins for his second of the game and then just before the 45 minutes were up Luca Dina again was the provider this time for Leon Bailey at the back post and the Jamaican headed past David Marshall Watkins narrowly missing out in a first half hat trick as he fired wide in injury time but at half time it's already a damaging scoreline in this Europa Conference League playoff round first leg, it's Hibernian nil, Aston Villa three. Hibernian in the Europa Conference League playoff round. Live on Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. Following Scotland's teams in Europe. Continuing tomorrow evening with action from the Europa Conference League playoff round. Chance of the rebound. We we'll bring you Hearts versus Pauk of Greece. The chance for Shankly! There's build-up on Sports Scene and Sports Sound, and then every kick of the ball, live from 7.45. They're always at their best when they're playing aggressively at home, and I don't see that it being any different against Pauk when they come to Tynecastle. European dreams live here. Watch on BBC Scotland. Listen on digital radio, or play BBC Radio Scotland Extra. From the highs of Hibs and Hart success last week, it's been a chastening night so far, to say the least. And you do think with some trepidation in terms of the second half at Easter Road. 3-0 to Aston Villa against Hibs at half-time. We will let our pundits reflect for a few minutes before we get some deeper thoughts on what they've seen and what they think may happen in the second half. In the meantime, there is more football on offer this evening in the 
WPL. In fact, one match is already underway between Hearts and Rangers this evening at Orium. It's kicked off at half past six. It's currently nil-nil. Five other matches this evening across the country. Dundee United, they're at home to Hibernian at half past seven. And Montrose host Aberdeen at the same time at Lynx Park. A 7.45 kick-off at Ainsley Park this evening as Spartans take on Celtic. Glasgow City are up against Motherwell. That's an 8 o'clock kick-off at Peters Hill. And Hamilton Academical are in action at the ZLX Stadium as well. An 8 o'clock kick-off for them against Partick Thistle. As we heard in the trail, it's a big night tomorrow night for Scottish clubs in Europe. Hacken of Sweden, the opponents for Aberdeen as they attempt to make it into the Europa League group stage. Sports Sound will be on air at 5.45 for that. It's a six o'clock kickoff. And then Hearts uh, in European action again tomorrow night as they attempt to get into the Europa Conference League group stage up against Pauk of Greece. That's going to be a 7.45 kick-off. You can hear that on Sports Sound here on BBC Radio Scotland as well. And you can join me on Sports Scene tomorrow night to see pictures of that as it happens. As it happens here at Easter Road this evening, it is looking very, very grim indeed for Hibs in terms of their hopes of progressing to the group stage of the Europa League. And let's be honest, at this moment... It would take an absolute miracle if that were to happen. Aston Villa 3-0 in front in total control and Hibbs just unable to threaten so far, which begs the question, how will this end up? Let's hope it doesn't get too messy. You can't help thinking about that Malmo match against Hibbs of 10 years ago now. 7-0 it finished at Easter Road for the Swedish side then. 9-0 on aggregate. Fingers crossed. We don't have the same sort of scenario this evening. The Aston Villa fans singing, Johnson, what's the score? Can we play you every week? Uh, football can be a very cruel game. Let's go back and get the thoughts of Stephen McGinn and John Collins, who've watched that first 45 minutes. And Stephen, if I can start with you, how would you sum it up? Yeah, it was difficult. All the hopes of the, the Easter Road faithful, the, the atmosphere, they, they really rattled Aston Villa in terms of their passing range. They gave a few away, passing ones out the park. But if you if you can if you let them deliver crosses like the first goal, um, which is a brilliant goal. I mean, the header's almost unstoppable. But if you let the balls come in very easily, they'll hurt you. It's a brilliant goal from Aston Villa's point of view. Then they start to enjoy the game. Then they start making you run. And it's been a really difficult last 15, 20 minutes for those Hibs boys. It wouldn't surprise me if it becomes about damage limitation. I wouldn't be surprised to say Jake Doyle Hayes or Jago, maybe both, just to give Joe Newell and um, Campbell a bit of help in there because they're working so, so hard, but they're just getting overloaded and Aston Villa are picking them off. And the more tired they get in the game, the easier it is for Digna to get higher in the box and deliver quality. John Collins... It has to be so difficult right now in that Hibs dressing room to find a sliver of hope here. What will Lee Johnson be saying to his players? Can you imagine? Well, it's a difficult team talk. Um, first half, I thought 15, first 15 minutes, Hibs kept their shape. But I was so disappointed that they never built from the back. 45 minutes, uh, David Marshall launched everything it's okay launching it if you've got Dodge at the top of the pitch who's winning flick-ons taking in his chest letting midfielders come and support him but you've got <laughs> Johan up front back to goal one he's not good near two he's no good he's back to goal so when you're playing up the pitch and you're losing you're losing the possession first time second time you've got to think um, we've got to change this and the easiest place to get possession of football pitch is in and around your goalkeeper where you've got superior numbers and it, but obviously the manager has told them push up and don't play out from the back that was pretty obvious from my from what from where I'm watching um, so it's a little bit late now to start so where do you go from here first thing I wouldn't play Johan up the top of the pitch for me he, he's not a he's not a central striker playing back to goal he's a winger who needs space needs to face up a full back knock it past him and use his pace so I would have him either off the pitch or, or out wide um, I think he might bring in Dodge because um, I think they're maybe going to go 4 5 1. And one thing you'll get about Dodge is he can take it on his chest or he can win some flick ons or it's set pieces. But it's going to be a long, long 45 minutes because this is an Aston Villa team now who's 
full of confidence, three goals up, and a manager that loves his team to keep the ball. So it's going to be a long 45 minutes. The Hibs players are going to try and keep their discipline, stay compact, because if they lose their discipline, don't stay compact, this could be anything in the second half. Stephen, do you feel Aston Villa have maybe targeted the Hibs' right-hand side? A lot of joy has come from balls coming in from the Aston Villa left into the Hibs' box. Uh, and just generally, how impressed have you been by Villa so far? Yes, uh, certainly something I spoke about. I mean, just by the Hibs' team selection, he'll have identified that the manager isn't fully certain of who his best right-back is. So it's an area of the park as well where Hibs have maybe targeted Villa. But with the cat and mouse, they only spoke about Lucas Digny. Keep Martin Boyle, keep him running back, keep him defending, and then he can't hurt you going the other way. And as I said, there's been far too many occasions where maybe Lewis Miller's got out, but just not quite, and Lucas Digny's able to deliver balls. And when he finds his range, he's as good a left foot as you can get. And Ollie Watkins' improvement in him, as I speak about Unai Emery, he's improved a lot of players. Unai Emery, eh, Ollie Watkins does a lot of his best work in between the sticks now. A lot of the time in his previous years as a Villa striker, he spent a lot of time out in the channels, but Unai Emery's desperate for him to play between the sticks and pick up the goals like he did for the second one, real poacher's goals. And it's really it's really punishing for, for Hibs, but they have to find a way of stopping the ball coming to the box. And John McGinn, obviously, was the big narrative before this match, John. Um, actually, the real <laughs> villain of the piece, if you like, might be Austin McPhee, because obviously their set piece... Uh, coach at Aston Villa and obviously goal number two coming from a set piece uh, Josh Campbell of course you know, losing Ollie Watkins for that goal and you know I suppose the question is just how disappointed have you been by Hibs but how impressed have you been by by Villa generally well they've had good deliveries out of the box um, they've had good movement in the box players attacking the ball Hibs will be disappointed when the ball comes into your box you want your centre halves to be getting, the net, getting their headers on it but um, one thing they've been good deliveries but Aston Villa have a better movement attacking the ball um, and as I say they've been crossing the balls from dangerous areas they haven't been crossing them from 30 yards out easy for centre defenders they've been getting to that byline and they're hard for defenders to deal with but they're, they're a good football team Aston Villa let's, let's not kid ourselves they're a top manager they're playing with confidence they all want the ball the first thing they build from the back every single time and the one or two times when their goalkeeper played it long their manager was out the dugout mm. going crazy I'm saying why are you playing it long yeah. keep it on the deck keep possession exact opposite of Hibs their goalkeeper's been launching up the pitch you give the ball away against good players it takes a long time and a lot of energy to get it back and that's what you see in the last 20 minutes that Hibs players were out on their knees and at that stage Aston Villa looked like they can cut them open at will what was your thoughts uh, first to you, Stephen, in terms of the, the Hibs penalty claim. I don't think either of you are uh, have uh, TV uh, facilities there this evening, so you maybe haven't had a chance to see the replays. It was a, it was Douglas Louise on Martin Boyle in the penalty area. The referee was clearly adamant. He felt there wasn't no. enough in it. Uh, well, is that, was that your instinct, John? Well, I'm lucky. The gentleman in front of me, I know, has got a computer, so we got, I got to see it. Uh, in slow motion mm -hmm. it was not a penalty I think uh, Martin Boyle put his foot uh, into the opponent uh, maybe it looked like a, a penalty from up here initially but when you see it in slow motion 100% not my, my gut was he was he, he had he didn't really have the ball under control and he was looking for Douglas Louise to come in the back of him and it felt as if he'd stuck his leg out to initiate the contact Douglas Louise almost trips over his leg at the time you're thinking there's definite contact and he's fell onto Martin Boyle but when quickly got the, the replay it looked like the right decision we're just getting the replays here into the studio as well and I just I have to agree with both of you absolutely it's, uh, there was just not enough in it it was almost a case of yeah it felt like Martin Boyle was hoping that Douglas Louise would do something but unfortunately for him Louise didn't do really anything at all so unfortunately for Hibbs that seems that's definitely gone a begging and most people seem to be in agreement that it wasn't a penalty and is that your gut instinct then, John? It's it's going to be a case of damage limitation for the second half. It's, it seems such a shame, but at the, at the same time, you were kind of thinking that when it was 1-0 to Aston Villa, you were, you were almost thinking, well, if, if Hibs can get in at half-time at 1-0, that would actually be quite good. But obviously, it, it's gone the other way, and and you well, do worry a little bit, don't you? Well, you've got to worry. 3-0 down against a team that have got a lot of quality, 
They've got pace in the wider areas. They've got a, a manager that makes sure his team don't give the ball away. A team that loves to keep possession. A big, fantastic surface here at Easter Road. They're going to, I know what their manager's going to be saying, make the pitch big, stretch it, get them working. First 15 minutes, take the juice out of Hibbs' legs, and then the final 30 minutes, you'll be able to carve them open. That'll be his team talk. The opposite team talking, opposite dress room. Man, Hibbs' manager will be saying, We've got to stay compact, got to stay disciplined. And what you don't want to see is one player running and pressing. 25 yards with no teammates round about him. That's the danger in the second half. They go in ones and twos instead of one unit. So we're going to see now, but it's going to be a long 45 minutes. And, that, and that's what Villa are waiting on. That's what yeah. the IM will be saying. That's how, it's how they it's how they build their play. Wait for the one person that that comes out of shape, comes early, then we punish them, then we get it into John McGinn, then we get it into the Abbey, and then we feed the forward boys. And that's that's how they can pick Hibs off. So they need to stay really disciplined, really patient here. I'm sure John McGinn will get a Stephen McGinn critique of his performance at some point, maybe later tonight, perhaps tomorrow. Uh, Stephen, how would you sum up your brother's first half? Yeah, he's been playing really well. I did. Uh, I will bring up the fact that he passed the ball at the pitch at one point and tried to look about to see who he could blame. But now nah, he's he's playing at the top of his game. As I said, doing I am. He's made players better. He's taking John to another level again. As hopefully we'll see in the next couple of weeks for Scotland. Um, He's, he's playing it in the in his form his life, so he's well, been a real threat for the Hibs boys. I hope he's in that dressing room telling him to take the foot off the gas, <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I think John, Stephen, John McGinn's confidence this evening summed up just a couple of minutes before half-time there, playing that ball across the face of his own goal. Yeah, in the first ten minutes, as I said, the Aston Villa boys were misplacing passes. The boys of these qu uh, this quality, top level, once they start to enjoy the game, they ain't missing passes. Absolutely. What will happen in the second half? I think there might be a change of goalkeeper on the cards for Aston Villa. Brian McLaughlin can tell us. Yeah, there's a change for both sides. Robin Olsen has come on in goal. He'll be replacing Emilio Martinez in the, uh, the uh, Aston Villa goal. And a change for Hibernian as well. Jordan Abita's night is over. James Chego coming on. Lee Johnson told me before the game he thought his formation and the team would be flexible. Well, they're going to be, have to be some flex in this team to get back into this match now. 45 minutes left, Hibs trailing by 3-0. The second half just about to get underway. Your match commentator is Alistair Lamont. Thanks, Jonathan, and indeed it is back away with those two changes that Brian has brought us. Jimmy Jago on, presumably tied a bit of steel in the middle of the park, and uh, almost some early work for Robin Olsen in the... Villa goal to do. It's an interesting change. I wonder if that is an enforced one or as uh, Ellie Ewan comes into the box and almost an opening there. Plays a, a dangerous ball across, but no Hibs player can get onto it. And Villa turn away. I'm just wondering if that uh, changing goal for Villa is an enforced one or maybe just with the game as good as one. Chance for Robin Olsen to get some game time. Very uh, experienced Swedish keeper as Hibs come forward once more into the penalty here, right hand side. Just a delay there from Lewis Miller as he had the opportunity to get the ball in. Douglas Louise eventually knocking it behind for a corner kick. But a positive start, at least in the second half for Hibs. Real positive start. Much better. The press high up the pitch, won the ball. Johan straight away, he's getting the ball, facing the fullback, running into the box. Need more of that. No injury to Emmy Martinez, uh, um, formed from uh, Brian down on the touchline as Hibs prepared to take the corner. Joe Newell, right-hand side, in swinger. Diego Carlos gets his head to it to knock it out of the penalty area. Comes to Diego and out to Yuan, left-hand side, as Hibs look to somehow get back into the game. Yuan goes for goal and a really good save from Olsen. Really top effort also from Yuan. Maybe just couldn't quite find a corner just over the top of... Robin Olsen's head and he stuck up the arm and guided it over the crossbar. This is much better from Hibs. That is when he's at his very best, when he's wider, facing up a player. He's not good when he's back to goal. The manager will be thinking, why did I not play him there at the start of the match? Another corner from the right-hand side. Newell again swings it in. Out comes the keeper, just gets a glove to that and knocks it out of the penalty area on the right-hand side. And Villa will try and counter. Good challenge there from Will Fisher, Douglas Louise. It'll be a, an Aston Villa throwing 3-0. Villa lead, but uh, Hibs out the charts pretty smartly in the second half, Stephen. 
Yeah, and I know the, the, the minority booed them, booed them off, but I think the crowd have recognised that they're going to need help in the second half. They don't want another Malmo. They, they want another... The, the way this get first half started, the Hibs boys really on top of the Aston Villa boys and making it difficult for them. That Malmo uh, mention was uh, in regard to their heaviest ever European defeat, 7-0 here under Pat Fenlon. And uh, I did look up the heaviest ever defeat because you know you've got to have that in your mind against a team of this quality who come forward and it's a hat trick for Ollie Watkins. Oh no, it's not. The flag is up to deny him. Well, they'll go and take the acclaim of the Villa fans, but it's all in vain. As uh, I'm assuming Dina was the man who was offside earlier in the move. Didn't look like Watkins was the VAR. We'll double check the decision is correct, but uh, almost a fourth goal in the blink of an eye from Aston Villa. It, it, looked, it looked really tight, but look as Digna is calling, causing all sorts of problems. Two of the Hibs players attracted to John come to the ball and they just find Digna. Lewis Miller's too too far off him again. It's just a first time ball and Ollie Watkins is marginally offside by the looks of it. Yeah, the word is good news was offside, and so it will not be an Ollie Watkins hat trick yet. And it won't be an Aston Villa fourth goal yet, but uh, it's a warning to Hibs who'd started the second half so positively. That's not official yet, incidentally. That's uh, still been looked at by the officials, but I just had a word in my ear from the producer to say they've had a, a rerun and looks offside. So uh, hopefully that will be the decision and Hibs can get back to the positive start they'd made to this second period. But uh, it just showed, I mean, that, that, that counter-attack was absolutely lightning, wasn't it? Goal. Oh, he's given it. Well, Mr Producer, thanks very much for that. It looked really tight, but it's it's an unbelievable ball in from Lucas Digny again, and Wally Watkins gets his hat-trick. Yeah, well, it was, it was certainly a marginal decision, and... Uh, I must say, if you look back at last night, for instance, I thought Cyril Desser was going to be flagged offside for Rangers' second goal, and when you eventually saw the lines, it was just on, and so the naked eye can certainly be confused until those lines are drawn. Uh, the good news for Ollie Watkins is that he has a hat-trick in Aston Villa colours here at Easter Road, but Hibbs, right. after that positive start to the second half, find themselves four goals down. That's the difference at this level. The final ball, the delivery. It's just passed into his path. Beautiful on the deck and a good finish. Oh, that's such a blow to Hibs. Because as much as they probably didn't really realistically feel they were going to get back into the tie, just to try and make something positive of the, the evening, as they had done at the start of the second period, but uh, so quickly... They find Aston Villa breaking on them and Watkins so deadly and Dina has just been on the money. That's his third assist of the night and here he goes again down the left-hand side and uh, the Bernian fans must have been wishing that his transfer to Nice had gone through. <laughs> they might need to change something in that area, Hibs, maybe move back Martin Boyle through the middle or his Lucas Digna is just having a whole run of the place. Here's uh, Venta on for Boyle, right-hand side. Sips look to try and get something on the board. Boyle into the penalty area, but away by Kamara, picked up by McGinn, touches it back there to Douglas Louise, and then McGinn once more, left-hand side. Forward for the excellent Watkins. McGinn once more, still left in field to Douglas Louise, and then Kamara and Aston Villa's passing is just a joy to watch at the moment, unless you're... A big fan of the release side. The difference is the man in possession has, has options left, right, front, behind. Lots of short passes, easy passes, but they're all easy if your teammates are really wanting the ball. All the way back to Olsen, who was made to work hard just a, a moment or two after coming on, but he finds the ball out to Douglas Luiz, who just flips it in the corner out to Konza, and here come Villa again. It's Wonderful to watch, it's Kamara for Luis now to the left-hand side for that man, Dino again, he looks up, he tries to cut it back, this time it's a poor attempted pass, looked like it might have been a handball by Josh Campbell as he tried to bring it under control, Villa claimed for it, and uh, 
Hibbs do have a free kick eventually as Campbell was dragged back as he tried to help support Yuan. It will be Villa's free uh, Hibbs' free kick midway inside their own half of play. It's at 52 minutes here at Easter Road. And unfortunately for Hibbs, the scoreline reads Severnia nil, Aston Villa four. Again, Lewis Miller's too tight in there. He's worrying about the striker. That's the centre half's job. Lucas Deegan is a threat to, to Hibbs and to Lewis Miller. And he, again, it's a, it's a poor final ball actually from Lucas Deegan. He's got so much time to pick, pick a Aston Villa player out. Will Fish has it at the edge of his penalty area. Aston Villa with a rich European pedigree. We go back to that. European Cup win in 1982 when they beat Bayern Munich 1-0 in Rotterdam. Uh, there were three Scots in that side, one of them, Des Bremner, a former Hibernian player as well, paraded to the crowd before this game. Here's Eli Yuan trying to help Hibs get something back, breaks the way of Newell and then to Campbell, just gets a rather scuffed shot away, breaks kindly for Olsen in the Villa goal who immediately launches that looking for Watkins again, but it's all the way through to David Marshall, who collects comfortably. And uh, just going back to that Villa team of 82, the other Scots, Alan Evans and Ken McNaught, also in the team. And, so, uh, so, and days. so Hibs decide to start playing out from the back with a 4-0 down. I don't know why they never did that at the beginning of the game. Torres has it on his own goal line, tries to clear, but it's a poor clearance. Campbell just looked to be caught there at the edge of the box, but play continues and Villa work it clear. Douglas Louise just shows too much of that, though, to Joe Newell. It's out uh, eventually off Newell for a throw-in in this side to Aston Villa. Nine minutes gone in the second period. Four goals up. Unai Emery's side find themselves and Joe well on their way to the group stage of the Europa Conference League. Joe Newell's been thinking about that tackle all week as a boyhood Birmingham fan. <laughs> Yeah, he'll not be enjoying this as a boyhood Birmingham City fan, that's for sure. Or indeed as a Hibs player. It's a free kick to Villa, uh, deep in their own territory. Conza is just going to leave this to Diego Carlos, who switches play out to Dina and acres of space out in that far side on the halfway line. Forward he comes, and then infield to Douglas Luis. Shot for Kamara, infield to... McGinn back with Kamara on the halfway line. Villa just strolling about just at the moment. 1-2 there between Kamara and Douglas Louise. It's effortless between those two. Now it's Diaby advancing towards the penalty area, into the penalty area, past Stevenson. Yuan just shields the ball away from Diaby and back into the arms of his grateful goalkeeper. As uh, Aston Villa look like they could score pretty much every time they come forward at the moment. Bowled out by Marshall for Hanlon, left-hand side. Hoists it forward as Boyle managed to stay on side. No, he hasn't. The assistance flag tells us and it will be a free kick to Aston Villa. And Villa, to their credit, have played that high line pretty well all evening. Hibs really haven't been able to break it at all. Yeah, it's something I'm surprised they've not had a look at. Maybe the, the sky is drawn and someone coming from deeper because it is something they're very, very good at. And you're not going to get in with a long straight ball. Torres has it for Villa inside his own half. Long time since we're in European proper, European competitive action at least. 05 06. We were beaten by the Neat Pro. John, you'll excuse me if I don't count uh, <laughs> your 40 into the Inter Toto Cup. But uh, they're not going to be there this time either. They've had a, a good run to this stage. The Luzerne results were highly impressive, but they've come up against a, a side who are just a class or two above even that this evening. And uh, Villa could well go on and replicate West Ham's success last season in this competition. They're a very, very well-drilled team. In possession, out of possession. Everybody knows their jobs. There's confidence. Everybody wants the ball. Man in possession has got lots of options. And they've got trickery in the wide areas. They've got players that can beat a man as well. Bailey keeps it in on the right-hand side. Back to Konza, midway inside the Hibs half. Forward comes Kamara. He's just dispossessed. And then it comes off his arm as Hibs try to clear. 
and it'll be a free kick to Lee Johnson's side just on the edge of their own territory 57 minutes in apart from the glamour of the tie it is the most difficult game they could have got you, you would think that Aston Villa aren't far, far, far off been the uh, favourites for the whole tournament so in qualifying it's as hard as it gets and they, they've shown a quality here certainly are They're guided by a manager who knows exactly what it takes to win in Europe three Europa League titles with Sevilla one with Villarreal and uh, it's just obvious what he brings to the Premier League and to Aston Villa in particular as uh, McGinn catches Lewis Miller in possession and Villa have it back once more it's trying to hound Villa in possession but it's out for a throw in to the English side over on the far side and it's all about really how many how many hips can limit Aston Villa to just at the moment and is taken over at the far side by Dina. Duke Douglas Louise gets it back to Torres, who comes all the way back to the substitute keeper Robin Olsen, who played for Pauk back in 2015 16, and we'll be seeing them in action tomorrow night on the other side of Edinburgh. We'll have that live for you on both radio and BBC Scotland television. Quarter to eight kick off ahead of that. We've got Haken against Aberdeen also. Uh, that is on radio. With a six o'clock kickoff. All the European action live on the BBC as Hib Hibs cough up possession rather easily. And here's Watkins coming forward again down the left infield. He has Diaby. Diaby, one touch out of his feet, and it's deflected wide for another Aston Villa corner. Diaby still looking to get on the score sheet tonight. You wouldn't bet against it, but denied on that occasion. Again, where did where did the move start? It starts all the way back with the goalkeeper putting his foot on the ball with studs, sucking Hibs players towards him to create the space at the top of the pitch. Just well-drilled, possession-based, intelligent football. Villa corner then on the right-hand side. Rodinha, the left footer, coming across to deliver this one. Already with three assists to his name. Looking to add to that tally. As Villa throw everyone forward, apart from the goalkeeper, is within 25 yards of David Marshall's goal. Dina looking for one of those options. Sends it back post. One at the back post, but onto the roof of the net by Konza. And uh, again, that could so easily have found its way past David Marshall and in for a fifth goal, but as it was... Once again, good delivery, but who gets ahead in the box than Aston Villa player? Better movement, better timing in the air. It is more difficult nowadays for defenders. You can't block, you can't hold jerseys like the old days. Once they're away from you, they're away from you in the box. But their movement's very good. Austin McPhee certainly has a role to play in that set-piece expert for both Villa and Scotland. He's not taking them and he's no head on them. No, I'll give you that, but he's, uh, he's helping set them up. Credit where it's due. But uh, absolutely, they have to be executed. And uh, Villa have proven themselves pretty adept at that. It's uh, back with Villa. In a defensive position, Diego Carlos just rolls it square for Pau Torres. McGinn then back to Douglas Luiz. Forward now for Watkins onto Diaby. Quick football when it gets into this final third. Bailey's done brilliantly away from Hanlon. Who's to cut it back for Watkins? Just nudged away from him. McGinn can't get there. Diaby was down, claiming for a free kick earlier in the move. Hibbs have it back, and it's Campbell out to Yuan, right-hand side, up against Torres, trying to take him on for pace. Yuan gets the cross into the box. Carlos cuts it out of the near post, and Watkins is back there to collect possession, just beyond the hour mark. Still, Hibbs nil, Villa four, and even the, the Hibbs counters coming to nothing this evening as Diaby tries a little back heel, comes to nothing in Hibbs do win it through Diego out to the left hand side for Stevenson, Stevenson midway inside the, the Villa half back it goes to Diego once more and now Will Fish just inside his own half out to the right hand side for Miller this is about as tough an evening as Hibs will experience all season if not uh, in their entire career been a real footballing lesson and unfortunately for them still 28 minutes to go 
Back with Will Fish, midway inside his own half. I think uh, Aston Villa preparing another change. Brian, this little lull in play, perhaps you can bring us up to speed. Yeah, Bubikar Kamara, who's been outstanding tonight for Villa, is going to be replaced. It's not getting much easier, though, because coming on will be number eight. 60 times Belgium cap, Yuri Tielmans. Yeah, he's a class act, former Leicester City man, that's for sure, and uh, tells you everything about the quality of Aston Villa's first 11 that he hasn't been able to get into it yet. He's uh, just preparing to come on, but he's ever thrown over on the far side, and I think Villa are just going to delay until they've uh, defended this situation, or otherwise, as Hibs hope the case will be. 18 minutes of the first half gone, 4-0 the trail, looking to get at least a goal to... Uh, them something to cling on to as little as that might be it's Lewis Miller right hand side launches it into the penalty area up goes Hanlon beaten to it by Kamara comes back to Newell though edge of the box turns away from Diaby there's a foul there at the edge of the box referee had a look at it and allows play to continue Jago tries to help it down the right hand side comes back to Yuan up towards the penalty area tries to come in field but he runs into bother in the shape of Douglas Luiz playing as a number Six and uh, operating in that particular role highly effectively it was linked with Liverpool, who have been uh, desperately trying to get a number six in the door, and uh, he's certainly one who fulfills that role superbly. I think when the team woman sign signing happened, you're actually looking at the partnership of Louise and Kamara and how good it was at the back end of last season, and thinking where does he fit into that because it's such a good partnership, but. <coughs> I, I really like Kamara, I think he's a top, top player. When you think of the money that Declan Rice went for, Caicedo's going for, Kamara's right up there every day, boys, for me. It's just forward planning. I would imagine he'll be selling Kamara in a year's time, so they get Tielemans in, he gets a feel for the club, the team. He's going to have to be sitting on the bench, I would think. But also, I mean, the, the bottom line is, especially if you're in Europe, uh, yep, as rotation. many managers have, have, have spoken, spoken to me about, you know, it's not a it's not a first 11 really yes. anymore, is it? Uh, it's a squad game and you have to have if you're challenging at the top end of the EPL you're going to have to have quality and depth and yeah. Tillman certainly gives them that in the centre of the park anyway he's still waiting to come on because Bailey has it down the right hand side up against Stevenson one way then the other Stevenson trying to hold him up out comes Jago to win possession for Hibernian tries to get his lines cleared and does that down the left Venter gives chase but uh, Diego Carlos there first and then Esri Konza showing real good skill up against Josh Campbell and then finds Douglas Louise and now it's John McGinn trying to thread it through for Watkins gets the pass off for Diaby it's a wayward shot from Diaby who is, uh, hasn't quite been in so far this evening 25 minutes left of the game it's Hibernian nil, Aston Villa 4 as the Tielemans substitution is about to take place if the fourth official can get his board working well, play has resumed once more and Tielemans shrugs the shoulders and has to wait a few seconds more as Villa pick up once more and it's uh, Diaby with his back to goal midway inside the Hibernian half out to the right hand side for Konza he's looked uh, very comfortable there at right back coming moved across from centre back where he played against Everton in the week Torres now forward for John McGinn out to Dina Dina up against Lewis Miller McGinn again inside the box left hand side can he get the ball across goal not quite, but he does there on his side a corner kick. He's did much better there, Lewis Miller, but he needs to go the whole way. He's close enough to Dini to get a feel for him, to get a contact with him. He, stand, he stands two yards apart and he allows John to run in behind him and John gets played in and wins the team a corner. Off comes uh, Bubakar Kamara. And on comes, as Brian said, Yuri Tielemans and then... Uh, Word is that Hibs are going to make a trio of changes as Villa, I think, plan another one as well. Brian will be busy in the next minute or so, so we'll just uh, let this corner play out as Brian uh, gets to grips with exactly who's coming on there. Corner kick then for Villa over on the far side. Almost three quarters of the game played. Villa with a 4 0 advantage. The ball swept in near post, and that was evasive action taken at the near post. Uh, by Dylan Venta to prevent the ball going straight in at the near post. There wasn't really anyone on the near post as such, and it might just well have crept in 
had Vinton not managed to get back there and knock it behind for another corner. It's a definite tactic. Douglas Louise has scored a few of their corners. And whips and that's the goalkeeper out. Yeah, here he comes once more. He's going to try it again. This time he's into the side netting. And it will be a goal kick to Hibbs. And uh, we can cross now to Brian McLaughlin the news of the changes. Yeah, thanks, Al. We need to get the paperwork done here. Yeah, three changes for him. Jake Doyle, Hayes, Christian Doidge, and Rocky Bishiri are the players going to be coming on. Josh Campbell, Dylan Venti, and Captain Paul Hanlon, the ones being replaced. And a couple of changes for Villa by the looks of it as well. Brian, are you in a position to confirm those? Well, I can tell you who's coming on, Al. It's going to be number 24, John Duran, and number nine, Bertrand Traore. The fourth official now has the board up. Yes, I think that's still the final Hibernian substitute is, yeah, 32 for eight, yeah. But we only have the one board down here at the moment, but yeah, the, the number's just about to go up. So it's definitely going to be Duran uh, coming on along with Traore. The players being replaced, the board going up. Now, Al, number 31, Leon Bailey, who's just had a magnificent 68 minutes so far this evening. He'll be resting him up, of course, Villa away to Burnley in the Premier League on Sunday afternoon. Traore also coming on. The player he's replacing well, hat-trick hero, Ollie Watkins. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Uh, Duran and Traore on for the final quarter of the game. Traore on the score sheet for his uh, first goal in Villa Colours, I think, at the, the weekend taking advantage of some uh, less than impressive Everton defending it has to be said but uh, the young Colombian yeah, notching for the first time in Villa Colours when he came on and uh, Bertrand Traore uh, Burkino Faso international actually played against Hearts last season for was actually here on loan the first half of last season so he and Duran on to try and add to the scoring for Villa as McGinn plays it out to the left-hand side for Dina. Back now with McGinn, Douglas Luiz, Torres at the back, just a couple of yards inside his own half, out to the left-hand side once more for McGinn, who's found Douglas Luiz square in the halfway line. Forward looking there for Duran, but Hibs have won it back, Doyle tries to use the pace of uh, Martin Boyle, but Torres was there ahead of him, and he manages to get it back to his keeper, and again Villa, just so comfortable playing out from the back, the ball's round the corner they're, they're played blind, but they're not really blind because the players are checking their shoulder all the time, they know exactly what's on and when. It was unbelievable from Timo Mins because Joe Neal really sniffed it, it wasn't a brilliant pass to Timo Mins from the goalkeeper, but it was just an amazing first time pass forward come Villa but Jago there to cut out uh, that ball in from Dina and Hibbs try to release Yuan down the left hand side Konza just trying to make sure he doesn't get in front of him and get to the ball and uh, he's managed to do that Yuan had a little clip at his heels and the referee just says right just settle that down and it will just be a Villa throw in 10 yards or so from their own corner flag 20 to play the Bernie and nil Aston Villa 4 it's been a, a canter this second half John Collins they're just knocking the ball about the, the movement in the middle of the pitch little triangles one touch it's next to impossible for the hips midfield to get near them when, when teams play one touch you can't get tackles in two and three touch you get a nibble at them one touch you can't free kick goes villa's way for the attentions of will fish on duran 19 year old striker signed in January from uh, Chicago for £16 million pounds. and looking to try and make an impact this season yet to start a game for for Villa as it's uh, flicked on by Triori Duran couldn't keep it and uh, Yuan comes down the left hand side but good working back there by Diaby and now it's back with Konza and Villa just slowing the game down as Brian said Villa up against Burnley at the weekend and uh, looking to get another positive result ahead of the second leg which is of course next Thursday Villa in possession deep in their own territory but uh, no panicking as ever as McGinn picks up with his back to goal plays it in field slightly wayward but Tielemans manages to win that ahead of Doidge 
And now it's back with Diego Carlos, just outside his own penalty area. There's a short ball into Tielemans. He scored that fabulous Sefi Cup winning goal a couple of years back against Chelsea. Uh, but uh, leaving Leicester on a free, that's a fabulous bit of business, apart from anything else, managing to get him under freedom of contract. Uh, out it goes to uh, Durant. Uh, to Traore, I beg your pardon on this right-hand side. Oh. oh, it's got to be a penalty, and it is. He was just taken right out of play by Lou Stevens, who was sold a magnificent dummy by Traore. To go one way than the other, uh, he, the fullback just hey. couldn't wait to swipe him down. Even and, I was sold with that dummy up here. It was a magnificent fake with his left peg, wasn't it? Wow, chopped it inside. Sorry, Lewis. He's so left-footed. I think Lewis just thought he was going to shoot with his left. He's trying desperately to, to block his left foot shot and he cuts onto his right and it's the biggest stonewall penalty you've ever seen. Yeah, well, we thought the Martin Boyle one might have been a penalty. First half, we were uh, disproved on that front by the replays, but I don't think there's any doubt about that one. And uh, there was no complaints there from Lewis Stevenson. And it will be Douglas Luiz, who, as I mentioned earlier, dispatched one against Everton on Sunday. And now he has the chance against David Marshall. He knows a thing about saving penalties. Can he prevent his side from falling five goals down as the Brazilian midfielder takes the slow run up and sends the keeper the wrong way? And it's 5 0 to Aston Villa. And in all fairness, it doesn't flatter them. They really have been a class apart this evening at Easter Road. They celebrate in front of their fans. It's a Bernie and Nell, Aston Villa 5, which is still over a quarter of an hour to play. Opposite side, he goes from Sunday, he sends it to the goalkeeper's left on Sunday today, it's the, the reverse, sends David Marshall the wrong way. Really cool performance again from Douglas Louise, they've just been really, really comfortable in there. A difficult night for the Hibs players, the Hibs fans, but from a purist point of view, you've got to admire the way this Aston Villa move the ball about in tight situations, intelligence, they trust each other. Players are marked, they still give it to them, a safe side, the little details that that's why they're playing in English Premier League. Another change after that fifth Aston Villa goal for the visitors, Brian. Yeah, the fifth and final change made by Unai Emery. The player being replaced, Ezri Konza, coming on to replace a Matty Cash, the only player who's missed out tonight from the side that beat Everton at the weekend. So Konza off, Matty Cash on for the last 15 minutes. Straight swap it right back there. Uh, the Polish international, English born. Uh, comes on as uh, Yuan looks to test him immediately going down the Hibs left but then tries to play it for Dodge and nothing coming off for Hibernian tonight you've got to see I know we spoke about it a lot with the offside trap but Eli Yuan just puts his head down for a minute and the whole Aston four, uh, Villa back four steps up and immediately Chris and Dodge, Dodge is offside and Eli Yuan doesn't have a pass Dodge just won it back though angle of the box left hand side comes back the way for Stevenson Jonathan used the word chastening at half time. It certainly hasn't been a, a chastening evening. I don't think anyone really predicted anything other than this sort of outcome, but I don't think either uh, any of us certainly took any pleasure from being correct. We would have much preferred Hibs to have been able to make a game of it, kept it a lot tighter going into the second leg, but uh, that second leg is going to be as close to a dead rubber as is possible, as uh, Villa will comfortably be taking their place in the Europa Conference League group stage. Hibs will have to settle for domestic football and getting some points on the board, which they'll have to try and do against Livingston at the weekend, having lost their first two. And uh, although Lee Johnson wouldn't have been expected to take anything from this game realistically, he will come under pressure if they can't begin to do better in the league as Villa come forward once more to the dummy from again, and it's not behind by Lewis Stevenson, just past the post of David Marshall with uh, a couple of Villa players coming in behind him he couldn't take any chances a Villa corner and it's 5-0 the visitors lead once again Lucas Dean getting into dangerous areas delivering quality into the box excellent little dummy from John again looking for a centre forward to be behind me for a tap in but thankfully for Hibs it was Lewis Stevenson there that just good quality movement it's that one Aston Villa waiting from Joe Newell thinks he's doing the right thing he's charging down the goalkeeper trying to work so hard for his team but that's what they're waiting for they pick you off and Lucas Dini is a man over and I'll work the uh, space himself and Aston Villa probably should have scored there it's 
So the corner kick to be taken, right hand side by Digne, back to Diaby, down the touchline it goes. Comes up to the angle of the box, out now to Tielemans, back with Digne, he's onside, right footed ball in this time, Dodge gets the header clear from about 12 yards out, Douglas Louise just plays it back out to the right hand side for Tielemans, down the right flank it goes for Traore, and then back with Tielemans, he's uh, run into trouble though and he just has a little pull back there on Doyle Hayes and he might find up he ends up in the book here it's certainly going to be a free kick to Bernie I think the referee is going to be lenient there on the, the Belgian who couldn't find a way through 13 minutes to play of the 90 for Bernie nil Aston Villa 5 free kick to Hibbs just inside the Villa half played square to Bashiri and out to the right hand side now for Miller Bashiri once more tries the big switch of play and uh, pretty aimless from the centre back and out of play for a, a Villa throw in about 15 20 yards inside their own half 12 minutes left again easy possession given away certainly was yeah wasteful from Bashiri as uh, Matty Cash takes a really dodgy throw in and Boyle almost able to get in was a bit like uh, the one that Villa benefited from against Everton at the weekend but on this occasion Hibs couldn't profit and now Villa will come forward on the counter and it's uh, Dina back to McGinn again the pace just taken out of that they're in they don't have to be in a great hurry now Aston Villa they have built up a handsome lead and they have it on the halfway line it's Cash they've got away with that throw in the Villa fans in full voice away to our right hand side they've travelled I think there's about a thousand of them or so here inside Easter Road be a good number more than that inside Villa Park in a week's time as forward they come it's Traore who's testing Stevenson again in on the left hand side again he's sold him the dummy still he has it can he get past the keeper he can't Marshall foils him back to Tielemans right hand side of the box sends it to the back post Dina can he cap his night with a goal it's deflected wide for a corner well, Traore has been tormenting Stevens since he came on. Another dummy there, one on the space. He couldn't find the finish. It will be ultimately an Aston Villa corner as he lead 5 0. For me, he's just a little overall hover it. He had an opportunity, I think, to bend it in the far corner of his left peg, try to chop it again. Thankfully. But from Hibbs' point of view, Ellie Ewan's got to do more to help out Lewis yeah. Stevenson there. He's backing away into his own box. He's in a world of trouble. He needs his winger to get back and help him out there. So a corner kick from the left-hand side, taken short by Villa. Boyle gets the challenge in there, but uh, Dina has it back. Boyle doing well again. He's allowed to continue with Dina claiming for a free kick, and he released Yuan here. Well, he tried to, but it's good backtracking. In all fairness, and uh, Villa managed to win possession back. I think we've just seen how quick Diaby is. I see, yeah, is Diaby is back there. I was almost kind of thinking it can't possibly be Diaby who's all the way back defending that, but it was. An incredible change of pace. Wow. Yeah, because Ewan's fast, right? And uh, Diaby was just showed him it's no fast. signs whatsoever of getting in there. Effortless. But also a terrific work ethic. Well, yeah, that's the that's that's key. It's not, not just about talent and skill, it's about hard work. Yeah, I suspect that's something that uh, Unai Emery drills into his players as well as uh, Diaby now comes down the other end and it's Traore out on the right hand side up against Stevenson once more plays it infield, it'll come to McGinn who I suspect would absolutely love a goal here at Easter Road not to be just for the moment as uh, Tielemans plays it out to the right hand side for Cash back again with Tielemans but the difference Joe Neal makes to Lewis Stevenson there that's why people think, say you're a good teammate you recognise you're in trouble you come over and you help him yeah. the damage is uh, limited given away momentarily there by Douglas Louise but uh, Tielemans wins it back Hibs no battling away there Deutsch has it and then Newell and Yuan released in the left channel back goes Diego Carlos Yuan a terrible touch and he's run it out of play it's so frustrating for Hibernian and his manager, Eli Yuan, just taking a heavy touch when he was in such a good position. So it's out for a goal kick. 5 0. So, Villa. so frustrating. Pace, he's in a great position. Oh, it takes that little bit of composure, either square or have a shot. 
<laughs> Miss controls it, takes his eye off the ball. It's uh, a goal kick to Villaldo, the referee was blowing a the whistle there for something I'm not entirely clear what it was. I think he was in caught in two minds whether to go for goal himself or to look for Martin Boyle. And as he's looked up to Martin Boyle's position, he's almost kicked the ball with his, his other foot. A real let off for Aston Villa. And it's a one time in the night, Eli Ewan looked like he's getting in. It's actually been given as an offside. I wonder if it was that against you, Anne, earlier in that move away up almost at the halfway line. But it uh, looked look close. That look, looks what it was pulled back for as uh, Duran is almost released. He was fouling Bashiri there, though. And uh, it will be a free kick to Avernian inside their own penalty. Here. Duran just being a little bit overly physical there. And uh, his own frustrations at not being able to get on the score sheet taken out there in the Hibs defender. But uh, the referee just calming things down. It will be a free kick to be taken by uh, David Marshall. We've got uh, seven minutes of the 90 remaining. 5-0 Aston Villa lead three goals in the first half uh, a double from Ollie Watkins and one from Bailey and in the second half Watkins completing the hat-trick before a Douglas Lewis penalty after Triori was fouled in the box by Stevenson and uh, Hibs will hope that is where the damage ends with six and a half to play it's a thankless task going down to Villa Park next Thursday where it could get even more demoralising As uh, Villa come forward on the right hand side, how difficult, regardless of you know, everyone knows that it's a class above your, your playing, but how difficult to come back from such a heavy defeat to, to kind of go into the next game with, with your spirit still high, with your self belief intact. Yeah, it's difficult. Also, the, the opposition you're playing on Saturday, Livingston, are going to make it very difficult here. There'll be a totally different atmosphere in the game. They'll fancy their chances of coming here, but Hibs, Hibs need to find a way because they're sitting in no points at the minute. Uh, Saturday becomes really important. Yeah, absolutely. Six to go here, and uh, Hibs will hope not too much in the way of added on time. Although the officials are being told to be uh, more strict in terms of adding time on for goal celebrations, for time wasting. Not that there's been a lot of time wasting tonight, has to be said. Uh, and indeed, for substitutions, of which there have been quite a number. There's you at looking to find Stevenson, didn't give him any favours with the pass and Villa have picked up after Stevenson slid in but uh, Hibbs get it back on the edge of their own penalty there, Bushiri and uh, in fairness to, you say, the vast majority of the Hibs fans who stuck by their side, they're a good voice still and um, they appreciate, I guess, the effort that has gone in to, to try and even just limit Aston Villa to the five goals because it, it, it could even have been worse. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to hear that appreciation. They have worked hard. They haven't worked hard enough to get in possession of the ball for me, but they've worked hard without the ball. Is there anything they could have done tactically? You think from the off to? Yeah, for me, 100%. They should yeah. have been building from the back. They shouldn't have been giving the ball away so cheaply. They needed to make Aston Villa work to get possession of the ball instead of just playing it long. As I said, play it long when you've got Dodge in the pitch, but you don't have Dodge in the pitch. Ali, Ali Johan, I think they got that wrong. Johan's a wide player, he's certainly not a central, central player back to goal. Stevenson fouling. It's, it's, diffi there. it's difficult because the clubs in our league that are set up defensively strong would be able to sit deep in their half and invite crosses into the box. Hibs' strengths all in the attacking areas. So it's really hard for Lee Johnson to go out and say, right, we'll play 10 behind the ball because it isn't their strength. They had to have a go. They just maybe need a wee bit more braver in possession, as John said. He's back with uh, Robin Olsen. 66 Sweden caps. But uh, doesn't feature very often for Villa's last appearance before this one was April against Brentford, one of only six last season. Afforded 45 minutes here tonight and looks like he'll get away with a, a clean sheet as well. It's a good play from Newell to get away from Tielemans in the middle of the park. But uh, there's an infringement there in the centre circle as Hibs are about to make, I think, what will be their final change, Brian, tonight. Yeah, Joe Lewis, he's run his socks off tonight again, but his night is over, possibly with a thought of uh, the Livingston game coming up this weekend. The man coming off.
to replace him, Alan Del Ferrier, who last season was on loan at League One Edinburgh City. Tonight he's playing against Premier League's Aston Villa. Tremendous reception with the head supporters. Appreciation, Joe Newell. He gives you everything. He's the one player in the middle of the park that's got a, lot, a bit of quality. He wants to get on the ball. He's worked hard off the ball tonight. He'll be a tired man tomorrow. Not quite as good a reception from the travelling support for the Boyhood Blues fan. Yeah, I think a few of the Villa fans have picked up on that, haven't they? And uh, giving them the message as he goes off. Uh, two and a half to play. Hibernian nil. Aston Villa fives. Hibs coming down the left flank. It's Stevenson gets it from Ewan. That's not a bad ball in. There's Del Ferrier in there. Can he squeeze it through for Boyle? Knows the answer is Torres. Snuffs Hibs out. And uh, again, Villa will come forward and continue to look to inflict further damage on Hibernian. It's Cash on the right-hand side. Gets it back from Tielemans, who asks for it again. Doyle Hayes goes to close him down. He was released by Villa before joining St Mirren. Here's Pau Torres at the edge of his own penalty. He plays it out to the left-hand side to the superb Luca Dina. 1-2 played on that left-hand side but with uh, John McGinn. Good challenge in fairness by Lewis Miller to knock it out of play. Dina felt that, so it'll be a throw-in, simply, I think, to Villa. It's a fair challenge from Miller, albeit a robust one. Dina's fine, back on his feet, takes the throw-in. 90 seconds of the 90 minutes remaining, plus whatever we're going to get added on. Villa have it in the middle of the park, given away, though, by... Eagle Carlos to Eli Yuan. What can he make of this opportunity? Not much is the answer as Tielemann sticks a boot in. Doyle Hayes though picks up and finds Miller. Now Dale Ferrier, who's got in, gone into that central midfield role, can also play it right full back. But, uh, in the middle of the park tonight as Jago feeds it forward. Doyle tries the little flick. He's going to come back to the striker on the left hand side. Up against Cash. He's got Yuan outside of him. Just sold him slightly short. And he's offside again, Eli Yuan. God, that would frustrate the life out of you as a manager, would it not? Yeah, but it's, as I said, I've said it numerous times, it's what they do. I think they've been to double figures for, for fouls won from offside. It's it's really disciplined. Um, they work at it all the time and it catches you out. You have to be constantly watching it as an attacking player. It's back with Olsen in the Villa goal. We're inside the final minute, just watching the fourth official with his board down there about to... Flash up exactly how much injury time will be added on. Hibs have won it back again in the, an offensive area. It's out to Yuan, who can frustrate and delight in equal measure, it would appear. Inside he comes, evading two or three challenges. Still has possession. He's gone all the way from left to right of the penalty area. Then he's caught in possession. It does come back, though, to Jago. Tries to clip it to the back post for Dodge. Villa clear the lines, and it's given away by Fish for McGinn, he just dragged back there, he still gets the pass off, and forwards comes Duran from distance, he'll go for goal, but he's well off target, and it will remain into injury time, Hibernian nil, Aston Villa 5. Was that three minutes of added on time? Yeah. Into that already, that's uh, mercifully short, I would say, for Hibbs, there's a yellow car flashed in the direction of Martin Boyle, who's just uh, lost all patience at last this evening. Frustration. Yeah. It's been a difficult night for him, not a lot of possession, nothing's came off for him. Free kick to Aston Villa with one minute of the three added on already played. And I think uh, Hibbs can probably be thankful that Villa, to some extent, have taken the foot off the gas in the second half, knowing that the game is well and truly won and conserving some energy for uh, their game of the weekend against Burnley. I, I think in, in some sense, I think they're still probing and Hibs boys are still having to work so, so hard, e even this one again. Lucas Digny's always out on available, they're always threatening, so to be fair to them, they have stuck at the Hibs boys. Villa in possession, just inside the Hibs half. Back with Tielemans, now Douglas Luis got that fifth goal, looks like being the final one, unless there's a, a late strike here as Traore, who's looked really impressive, coming in off the right-hand side since coming on. Looks lively, here's Cash up inside the penalty, right-hand side, tries to hammer it across goal, but Stevenson 
stuck the left boot in, Yuan picks up, the fans beginning to get on his back for what they feel perhaps is uh, a bit of lack of awareness almost from Yuan at times, but he managed to keep possession on that occasion as uh, Diego Carlos takes the ball out of the sky and knocks it back to his goalkeeper inside the final minute of added on time. Early on, it, it frustrates the, fact that the supporters because sometimes you look at him and you think, are you switched on? It's like he's, he's in another little world sometimes and you watch him. You get you get this, he's trying to prove to everyone that he's a good player. He takes too many touches, touch, 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 rather than just use his pace, knock it past somebody, keep it simple. He's at his best when he does the simple things. A Aston Villa want him to be taking yes. touch, touch, touch. Aston Villa don't want him to be uh, making runs and running with the ball. Uh, foul there by Bashiri on uh, former hero of these parts, John McGinn, and that'll be more or less the last action after this Villa free kick is taken. It has uh, unfortunately been as one-sided as uh, many of us feared it, it might be with the English Premier League side just too good for Hibernian as the Spanish referee sounds a final whistle and to their credit most of the Hibs fans who have stayed rise to their feet to applaud their team but I guess also there's a bit of appreciation for a very very good Aston Villa side who are certainly applauded off by the thousand or so fans who have made the trip up from the Midlands and who have seen their side rip him apart three goals in the first half as soon as they got on the score sheet they never looked back Luca Dina the architect of three goals tonight for Villa he provided the first for Ollie Watkins a glancing header to take it past David Marshall that was in 17 minutes and uh, it was two when Watkins squeezed in a header at the back post from uh, Douglas Luiz's corner that had been flicked on by Diego Carlos and then Dina again the provider for Leon Bailey just before the interval to make it 3-0 the header from close range again at the back post into the second period Dina picked out Watkins it was flagged offside as Watkins flashed it in for the hat-trick but uh, it went to VAR and VAR decided with the use of the technology that uh, it was onside the goal stood and Watkins had his hat-trick and then the misery of Hibernian was completed uh, when Traore on as a substitute completely out Fox Lewis Stevenson was swiped to the ground by the veteran fullback and upstep Douglas Luiz the Brazilian from the penalty spot sent uh, David Marshall the wrong way to complete the scoring it was a real lesson in football from Hibernian who knew they were up against it and boy did it turn out that way it's finished at Easter Road in the first leg of the Europa Conference League playoff with the second to come a week from now at Villa Park Hibernian nil, Aston Villa 5 Hibernian 5